Hello. <laughs> Hello. So we're going to talk about brain spotting today. We are going to talk about brain spotting today. We are in Sydney, but we're not in the same room today. But we decided that it would be nice to talk about brain spotting. And um, long time we haven't had this chat. I mean, we have talked a lot about brain spotting, but we never really done yes. this way. So we yes. are learning new things here as well. We're playing with technology. So <laughs> thank you yeah, for letting us play with technology. So Selene, to start, so tell me briefly what your brain spotting story is. How did so, it start? Yeah, it's an interesting story because because of brain spotting, I'm here in Australia, in a way. So yeah. I met David in Brazil in 2004, a bit earlier than that. Like personally, I met him earlier than 2004, but his first course in Brazil was when he was doing uh, something different with EMDR at that time already, he was already changing. So I had already had training, training with him and I was really, really happy to see him and see how amazing uh, he was with his creativity. And then in 2006 or seven, he came to do his, his first ever brain spotting training and was in Brazil. And, uh, you know, brain spotting, you need some, dem you need to do demonstration during the course and all that. So I decided to be one of the volunteers and I worked on my fear of speaking English. Your I fear had, of speaking English. Yes. I was so scared of that. I had learned, I have studied for at least six, seven years, couldn't speak. I could read, I could uh, write. I was very good at the grammar, <laughs> but my speaking and my understanding was really, really weak. And I felt, because was, I felt like I would feel frozen. I couldn't, like, it was just like, oh my God, I'm gonna die. That was the feeling when someone would talk to me. Yeah. So, uh, as you know, he speaks in English. He doesn't speak Portuguese at all. So during the demonstration, we, have, we had a translator, which was Andre Monteiro at that time. Oh, lovely. So, so uh, yeah, David, nice. so Andre is translating. David to me and what I'm saying to David and to the whole group and then we had this um, so it was fear of speaking English and then my brain went to different places like my childhood my relationship with my dad some pain in my back so many different things and in, by the middle to the end of that session I started to speak in English with David and I wasn't aware so the translation wasn't anymore for me with David because I was understanding him and I was talking to him. Uh, and he actually said to me, have, have you noticed that you're speaking English with me? And I'm like, oh, I am in the front of everyone. That was my biggest fear. Yeah. Anyway, was that, oh my God, I can actually let this come out from my mouth. And the thing is, I didn't learn English doing brain sparring. <laughs> What I usually say is that my brain had that, that information someplace, in some place. My English was there somewhere. But the fear and the shame was blocking that for me yes. to access that. Yes, so yes. So much brain spotting helped me to unfold that or make different linkages in my brain. I was able to speak in English. And now I actually teach brain spotting in English. How Such a fantastic story. Yes, and you teach brain spotting all over Australia in, in English. Yes, and I can understand <laughs> Australian English now. Yeah. <laughs> and I have even a little bit of the accent now. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Yeah, so how, how is your story about this brain spotting? Um, I met David Grand in, um, I had taken David's natural flow EMDR trainings in America before. And then I saw him at the Emdria conference in Montreal in 2004. And he was selling his CDs in the product hall. And he had sort of six chairs and six of his CDs with um, earphones. And so people were sitting at his product desk and listening to the CDs and then buying CDs. So um, I went up to him towards the last day of the conference, the last end of the last day of the conference. And he had a little sign on that table that said something about brain spotting. Yeah. And I said to him, David, tell me in very briefly, in two sentences, what is brain spotting? So we know now how ridiculous that question is. 
because no one can explain brain spotting in two sentences. <laughs> so even back then, he, he said to me, look, I cannot explain it to you, but let me give you a session right here, right now in the product hall. So I put on the headphones with the bilateral music and he told me to choose something. Mm -hmm. And I chose um, my abandonment issues. Now, when I first told this story to a group of people, they thought I'd never worked on my abandonment issues before. But I had worked on it for over 20 years. But there was still, I would still go into a, a hole, um, you know, if I felt rejected or abandoned. Yes. yes. So, and there was a person at that training who I was quite liking and um, we had made plans to maybe meet later in the year. So I sat down and we, David helped me find uh, an eye position that correlated to the feeling in my body when I feel that abandonment feeling. Mm -hmm. And I just kept my eye on that fixed eye position while I had the bilateral music on. And people came and went from the product hall <laughs> And David would go and sell some to CDs and then he would come back and he would say, what are you getting now? <laughs> I kept saying, David, I need to leave because, you know, I'm taking up one of your spots here. Yeah. And he goes, no, no, trust me, trust me, stay there. I'll be back. So anyway, so the end of the story is um, that that was the end of the conference. And this um, fellow who I liked and I were going to dinner Mm -hmm. And um, he was going to come to Australia later in the year. And then on the in the taxi on the way back to the hotel, he said to me, by the way, I'm not going to come to Australia at the end of the year because I have a girlfriend at home. And then I felt disappointed and a little bit um, frustrated that he had not mentioned mm -hmm. this before. And I thought, oh, my God, I haven't gone into a pit of despair. Oh, uh-huh. And I thought, this is what people feel. This is like a level two reaction to a level two event. Yeah. And I used to have a level 10 reaction to a level two event with this yeah. abandonment issue. And it was gone. So that was 2004, 14 years ago, and I have never had it again. So that if I have a feeling that someone's leaving me or doesn't like me, I just, again, it's a... It's a um, normal response to that event rather than feeling that life is over and I can't go on. Wow. So I was hooked and yeah. I said to David, when, when are you teaching this here? And he was teaching it three weeks later in Chicago. So I went. So that was only his second ever training of brain spotting in the world. So I've been doing it since 2004. Yes, 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 yes. Very interesting. Very interesting. Yes. So, so now, we, as you said, like it's so hard to describe brain spotting. So how would you describe, Rob? Like how are you how you're introducing to your client? Or how would you explain to yourself? Like when you think about brain spotting, how would you say? I think that, um, you know, we have two parts of our brain. One part where we can heal, heal issues with talk therapies, a lot of different types of talk therapies. But if we look at the um, analogy of the iceberg, you know, there's the piece on top of the water and that big piece underneath so our brain is exactly like that so the top part is the talking brain that we can see that we can understand and the bottom part is the subconscious part which we can't access with talking but David has fallen into a way of using a system that everyone already uses all the time which is using our eyes um, to find information in our brain or to calm ourselves down or to um, rest so the tagline is where you look affects how you feel. So everyone's doing that all the time. And by thinking of an issue and finding a place for our eyes, we're able to access that deeper layer in our brain, that part of the iceberg that's underneath the water. And then processing just naturally starts happening. Yeah. So it's not based on talking. Um, and the, I think the, th the word that comes up most when people first do brain spotting is they say, oh, this is weird. I don't know what's happening. It's weird. I know something's happening, but it's not something I've experienced before. Not that it's a bad thing. It's, yes. a, new, it's a new experience for people to be in the, the subcortical part of the brain and to feel something's happening, but they can't use words really to describe what it is. Yeah. And how about, how about you? How do you yeah, describe think... it? I think it's exactly what you just said. Like it's, um, I like to use the, the explain the brain 
you know, to people what happens there. I also love to use a little bit of our, our thing, the MATES brain regulation program, to give them a little bit more of what is happening in the brain, our defenses and all that. But if you have to really only talk about brain spotting, I think what brain spotting is doing is really uh, going more directly, as you said, to that sub sub uh, subcortical part of the brain where we hold our defenses, where we hold the, the parts of the brain that says, this is safe, this is unsafe, and regulate that part goes deeper into the self, the, the, our self-regulation, help, help us to, to feel more present, calmer. And you, I was laughing when you say, oh, some people don't, cannot describe how they feel. And I had this client, I'll even give this very short. She, she came because she wanted to stop smoking marijuana. And then we did brain spotting and she's like, oh my God, this is much better than marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> yes so that's I, the feeling of you know you you go into and I said what do you mean and she said I feel more centered my thinking now makes sense I can actually understand what's happening right now to me why I have done that and why you know so and also feel like I'm more empowered so I think what what David really helped us to understand we using you know brain sporting and found out that having fixed fixed eye in a position access that um, uh, regulation part in us. So we therapists just need to hold the space for the client to access that part and let the, their brain to do the work. So what I like to say when people don't like much this brain talk, I like to say, talk a little bit about trauma in a very simple metaphor. Like it's like, you know, sometimes we have like orchestra in our brain. We have, we have that orchestra happening for us. And then sometimes what's happening is each player each artist is playing whatever they want to play. They think they are doing the same thing, but they're actually doing a different part. They are not in the same timing. So it's that, oh, where I'm gonna go? And, and we, res we respond differently. Some of us are gonna disconnect. Some of us are gonna be overreactive because this is busy inside of us. But I think what brain spot is doing it is actually helping this, all artists in our brain, all these parts to start to have harmony and integrate and start to have the same timing to play the same song. And then we feel into the flow. We feel more present and calm and centered and clear and regulated. And what I, what I think it's important to say is that brain spot is a relational therapy and neurobiological therapy. And I think that's the main beautiful thing about uh, bringing this method to, to our you know, practice. And also, um, when David was talking to Stephen Porges, who mm. explained to us all about polyvagal theory, um, Stephen Porges said, when you have a fixed eye position for four seconds or longer, it starts to create down regulation in the autonomic nervous system, which explains why people can stay on an, a, a fixed eye position, but still remain calm. Yeah. So that's another nice piece. But I think the other, as you say, the other piece um, that we're highly attuned to the client. What I love about brain spotting is that we don't have protocols or scripts or lists or, um, you know, tables or things to fill in, homework. We don't have any of that because then we can focus much more on just being with the client in a sacred space while their genius brain is doing the rewiring for them. Yeah. And so I think you're saying something very nice, Robin. I would, I, I would just, we had, we had so beautiful topics here to talk about, but I'm going to just go through. So what do you think is the, uh, has been the best gift, you know, from that BrainSpot has given you as therapist? I think for me, um, it's helped me with my own attachment issues. So I have tended to be in the past more of an avoidant kind of attachment style. Mm -hmm. And it's helped me really be able to heal that because we know also with Alan Shaw's work with the right brain to right brain connection, that healing while we're sitting with a client, while they're healing, our brain is also benefiting from that. And I think that being with people in that safe space has helped me and with my own issues to be able to connect with people and be more secure in my attachment with clients, friends. Um, and the last time I did a demonstration with David, we ended with some eye contact brain spotting 
And I could really see how far I've come with just having eye contact and being comfortable with that kind of intimate connection with others. So th- yeah. I think that's the gift for me. Beautiful. I think, I, I think mine is very similar because it's as best of when the cock has said that if you therapist, if you have trauma, your client is going to feel it. It's going to pick up and it's going to respond to that. So I think learn, brain spotting made me look at myself more and my presence and how is my self, how is my regulation? You know, how I'm feeling at that specific moment, how I'm able or not to hold the space for the client and also how to see the client where they are more than just what they're saying, but where they are when I feel them. Yeah. So I think I, the other thing that I love is I learned to feel comfortable with the silence and knowing yes. how to value the silence during the, the session and, and knowing that that's important. And I can just stay with that comfortable, feeling comfortable with that because my, 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 what's going to contribute to that is my, my own regulation. Yeah. So my presence. And so, yeah, lo- like, interesting because it's exactly what you just said is how can we see ourselves more in that the presence of the client and connect better and I think, communicate better i think the other thing too is the uns- you know in brain spotting we have the uncertainty principle um you know that i don't need to know everything i don't yes. need to figure out and fix whatever the issue is that the client is bringing of course i bring all my learning and experience and training but i don't have to know Yes. What to say or do next. So and learn how to trust that brain. Yeah, that that that, that the, he, the client's brain is gonna bring the answer. It's gonna heal them. It's gonna yes help them. Yes. Yeah. And it, all I have to do really is hold the pointer, or sometimes not even do that if they've got a gay spot, <laughs> or they found some other point somewhere, and just stay yeah. with them. And I think the big thing that clients get from it is even though there's less verbal connection, there's way more connection energetically in the room and they feel held in a way I don't think my clients have felt held before. Um, I agree. And so then they can go deeper into that world. They're in a a landscape um, and just go and know that we are there and that they can come back and I think it gives them a lot more autonomy I also think that we've infantilized clients a lot, particularly trauma clients, trying Uh to make thinking they can't do too much. But I think with brain spotting, it's so empowering for clients that they find very quickly how capable they are of of just being with themselves and allowing their own healing process to happen. And that's been a gift. Yeah, and I think you you just remind me about something that's amazing with brain spotting, that's easy to do, which is not only to work on what is the blockage, what's the problem, but enhance uh, what is already working, what's already uh, happening for them, like their own qualities or, you know, their performance. Okay, I have done until here, but I feel like I need a little bit more. So instead of just going to trauma, no, 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 we don't need to go into trauma every time. We just need to go from here where you are and help you to feel more empowered to go where you need to go next. Yeah. So I think that's the, the beauty about brain spotting. When we work with resources, when we work not only for what is activating them negatively, but also, um, yeah, empowering with what, what's already happening that's positive in their lives. Yes. But, I, um, I think it. the other thing with brain spotting that's good that we can do that a lot of other therapies haven't been able to do to this point is how do we work with people who are in a complete shutdown, um, who was, you know, who have those medical no, syndromes. No, because you're talking about that. Tell me a little bit about your clients while you're talking about all this, because I know it's all the clients you have been working with. So if you can put that together with the types of clients you work with, it would be amazing. So I, I, I work a lot with people who have complex post-traumatic stress disorder, development to trauma disorder. Um, and, In the nervous system, when trauma happens, we know from Peter Levine that trauma happens in the body. It's not in the event. The event has passed, but the trauma stays locked in the body. So for some people, they can't access what's happening in their bodies. So they're just, they're able to think things through, but they've lost the ability to sense emotion um, and to sense sensation in the body. Um, So with brain spotting, we have what we call outside windows. So the therapist can help that client. So I had a client who... Um, a young man who was not able to give me um, 
any feedback about what was happening, though he was anxious. So I found a spot for him that correlated, that I saw correlated to that. And he stayed on the spot for a while. And then later I spoke. And then at the end of the session, he left. He couldn't tell me if anything happened. And the end of the session, he left. And I spoke to his mom a few weeks later. And she said that he had moved out of... He had gotten a job and started at TAFE. So... <laughs> Wow. From the outside, yes. there was no way of knowing yes. if anything was yes. happening. But because David, because David found this outside window with his first client, which was the ice skater, that yeah. helps me work with that young man who otherwise yeah. I could not have helped. The yeah. other side is that I can work with people who are so in what Peter Levine calls global high intensity activation, which is they're so traumatized and so in anxiety and panic attacks that those people are also hard to work with. So I've worked with those kinds of people and David's discovered something called a body resource spot, which is a way that we can start to work with big trauma, but in a way the client can start to approach it without going into overwhelm. So I think those yeah. two sides of the spectrum completely shut down so you can't work with them and I'm so sure. activated that you can't work with them. In the very first training, brain spotting phase one, we teach you ways of working with both ends of the spectrum which I think is just such a gift to clients yeah. and to therapists. And I, what I think about that too, Robbie, you just helped me to remember something important to say that uh, when we learn brain spotting, it's not that we are going to learn a new therapy. We are going to learn a new method. And so work with traumatic, tra uh, traumatic trauma, um, you know, all these types of very complex trauma clients, you have to know, you have to have your own, you know, uh, training on that. And what I love about brain spot is that it adds so much more into that. So you don't learn about trauma in the training, but you learn ways how to help trauma. And you, what I love is that you can integrate whatever you learn with brain spotting with what you already know. So it's not that you're going to learn brain spotting and you don't you don't, know, you don't do anything else. You are going to learn brain spotting and integrate with what you already know. And as you are very, um, you are very good at work with, um, oops, telephone is ringing. <laughs> as you're very good at, you know, work with um, uh, addiction, for example, you know, you, you, you have already that. That's what's what you, you knew how to do. But when you start using brain spotting with addiction, it would just, can you talk a little bit about that? It just change your client's, you know, um, life, putting these well, two together. Well, I, yes, because I thought um, my heart has always been with helping people with addiction. And we know now with the ACEs study that no one is an addict unless they've had quite a bit of trauma in their lives. So I was looking for a way to help addicts stop the using behavior easily um, and without having to what we call white knuckle. So just mm -hmm. <laughs> grit and bear it mm -hmm. and not used, but you're never comfortable. Um, yeah. So I started doing research and what I found was there's two parts of the brain that are not directly connected when people are in the craving phase of their addiction. So I used a way of using brain spotting to connect these two parts of the brain, um, which I called the crocodile spot because I also use narrative therapy with my clients with addictions. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I use the crocodile as the metaphor for the addiction. So I've shared this um, crocodile setup, uh, which is it's called, um, with therapists all over the world, and they're having remarkable results with people just not being interested in taking drugs or you doing their behaviours. People have mm -hmm. also used it with um, domestic violence for people to get out of very seriously threatening um, yeah. relationships. They've used it with cutting, shopping, sex yeah. addictions. Mm -hmm all sorts of things. So there's the brain I think is capable of all sorts of healing and we're sort of out here on the outside um, in the, I think very early stages of being able to access the full capacity of our brain's capacity to heal ourselves. So yes. that addiction, you know, thing I think was just a small, a small way that I figured out to try and connect parts of the brain um, using neuroplasticity. Norman Doidge's mm -hmm. work, um, so to, cr to to create a new neural connection between the parts of the brain that want to use and the parts of the brain that don't, 
and it's giving yeah. people a very gentle way to stop using and or doing the behavior that they've become addicted to. Yeah. And what about you, Selene? What have you used brain spotting for in other ways? So um, I started just using adults until I got a beautiful, because I, I also work with children, but then I was using other things to work with children. But one day, this little boy, he was six years old, and he came to my office asking about very deep things like why we live, why we die, why we are living, why we should continue this life. And I'm like, oh my God, I cannot answer those questions to him. You know, like I have to help him to find those answers. And I was, and he was very creative. We love doing things with, you know, creating things in the office using his hands and all that. And something came to us that we should make a sky and we should make stars. And we just took a piece of paper and make holes on that paper, have torch in, in the office. So we, we put the reflection of the, the little holes on the wall and became stars. And we're like, oh my God, stars in the sky. And I came with this, you know what? You, you asked me something, you want an answer for why we live or why we should live and why we should die. Why don't you ask for those stars? And he chose one star specifically and he started to talk to the star. He started to listen to the star. And the star, and then he found another star, one saying why you should live, why you shouldn't live. And in the end of, and I was just observing all that, just, just helping him to, okay, is there any other star or things like that. And by the end of that, he was, you know what? We don't have to make any decisions today. If you want to die, it's okay. If you want to live, it's okay. We don't have to make any decision. We just need to know that we can live and we can die. And I was just like, oh my God. Wow. <laughs> He's only six, you know, and, and he got that awareness that was in him. I didn't put that in him. Maybe if I would say something it would make it worse and make, me, make him more confused, but he had that in him that he wanted to express in that way. And, um, what I learn more and more when you work with children is how stories can help the brain uh, integrate. So what brain spotting did by using some kind of, you know, stars, talking to the stars, so then you can help the child to focus more on one spot. And he actually was diagnosed with ADD when he came to me. So you just go like, this is not ADD at all. You know what I mean? Like, yes, might be something going on there, but it's not really that because he was able to focus, he was able to talk, he was, so it's more like how can you help them to feel connected so then they can go inside of themselves. As Danielle, oh, Danielle Siegel always say, they need us, the adults, you know, to help them to have the sense of self. So I think what Brain Spot has helped me with was creating this talking to the star, which is the way how I work with children, uh, help them to have more sense of the internal world indirectly because children have fear to go inside. They, many times, uh, depending on their age, they cannot even really uh, talk about themselves, you know? So if they're three, four, they cannot really say, I did that, I want that. They have to talk in third person. And with even older children, it's better to put in third person so then you can have more, they feel more free to talk about it. So the thing that I have been doing more and more is how I can help parents now to understand that connection through talking to the stars. So I actually have the parents in the session with me watching them talking to the stars or talking to the stars with the children in this, the room so they can uh, have a dialogue through the stars. And that has been so empowering that some parents start to do that at home. And I haven't said anything and I'll train them to do it, but it's how amazing this can expand and help children. And, uh, there are, as you were saying before, Robert, there are some people that they have difficulties to really focus on, uh, on something or they have difficulties to express themselves. And sometimes if you have, if you use a little bit of your creativity, you can help people actually find that spot and help them to go more in. And, and sometimes they don't need to tell you anything. You just need to be holding the space, learning how to follow the, we call in brain spotting, following the, com, uh, the tail, tail of the comet. So clients, you know, at the comet and we therapists has to just be in, at the end on the tail. So they guide us where they need to go. We just keep following, holding the space for them. Um, there are the type of clients, Rob, that I have been using a lot. There are so many things I could be sharing with you here and you do with me. But just to be, try to be more sh uh, shorter is online clients. So I'm having more Skype uh, sorry, uh, online uh, clients. So I'm using brain spotting uh, via Zoom, Skype, whatever you call it, online. So this is possible as well. Yeah, sometimes 
And maybe we could, maybe we could talk about that on another on we another can, day because that's on, that, I think a very interesting topic that we can do another little piece on. Um, of but I think we've, we've just got to wind it up now. So I just wanted to let people know that we are fortunate enough to have David Grant coming back to Australia next year in the 22nd to the 25th of August 2019. Um, and he's doing a very special uh, training for us, which is going to be, he's going to do a, a normal three-day phase three training, um, which also includes working with um, performance with athletes, entertainers, anyone with performance um, that they want to expand. Uh, and then he's going to also do an extra day for us, which will be one day of a masterclass, which is where we will get to also watch David work and perhaps do some supervision with some some people, some of the participants. So that's um, put that down August 22nd to 25th next year, 2019 in Sydney. So, so I think that's if, it for today. No, no, no. We have to let them know how they can get that course. So for them to, to, to do it, they need to have at least, they have to have phase one at, at least. Yes. Um, so yes. we, the one, people who already have done phase one and two are welcome to come to this workshop, but quickly just telling you the training in BrainSpot, if you want to participate, we are going to be offering phase one this year and phase two, Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane, uh, not two at this year in Brisbane, but anyway, we can, we can give you the details of the dates, but yes, you need to have at least phase one to do his uh, phase one and two to do his training uh, because it's advanced. So it's important that you have the basic uh, training. So it's phase one and two. And uh, if you want to become even more expert on this, you do the five hour supervision, which you become certified by his institute. But yes, if you want to come and see David work in person, you're going to love, love, love and learn a lot. Come to us, Rob and I are teaching around Australia and go to our website, which is www.australiabrainspottingaustraliapacific.com.au. Perfect. Robbie, thank and you we don't time. have Dave um, registration. Okay, thanks. Oh, sorry, I just sorry. Want, we don't have... We don't have David, the registration up yet for David's training, but we'll have it by uh, the beginning of September. And we hope yes, to see you there. Perfect. Thanks a lot for joining us today. Thank you. Okay. Bye, Robbie. Bye. <laughs>